Myself, I never skip a beat. I meditate every day so I can keep my peace. But if you look into my soul, I promise you will see. The creator chillin' sitting on his throne, yeah. Only when you ride my body is his home, yeah. Hey, I'm a god, can't nobody tell me different. Me and my father, I'm one of y'all just don't get it. My consciousness has ascended to a higher plane. So the respect for me and you to ever think the same. I help others find ways to cope with their pain. Important than me, and if I don't fulfill it, you gon' get this work from my seeds. I gotta keep going hard till I'm six feet deep. My presence still gon' be felt. You can't destroy energy. We ain't taking no days out. We put our lives on the line with this perpetual grind. All this hard work gon' pay off. I'm in a check of this free mind. We don't like the way time. We don't ever show off. We rather move inside. Why would I stay the same, knowing that I was born to make a difference? No suit, check with the with the boots out the roof and through the sky. Can't spell units and partner without the you and I. Crucial decision for the tribe to see a do a deal. Ain't no middle men, go to sheep, you gotta choose a side. Please, Father, let these verses have anointing in it. So we can touch the weary soul at the appointed minute. Live for the doubt about it, that ain't how it make you feel when you analyze the mission. Then it's pointless, really. Hundred and forty four carry gold perpetual on the grain, get it out the dirt like a vegetable. This wicked world make me sick, still I'm all in. Work for the most high, never call me. We taking no days out. We put our lives on the line with this perpetual grind. All this hard work gon' pay off. I'm in a check of this the free mind. We don't like to waste time. We don't ever show off. We rather move inside. In my members, mighty tree was falling down on most high yelling timber. Really had to cut me down, the young and I ain't proud with it. Crash with brother plane, cause I was up there in the clouds with it. Yeah, down to earth, he had to humble me. Had to get them shackles off my mind. It took a major key. Put your whole life up on the line. We call it major fee. I'ma do my chores because I want my father proud of me. I'm on fire, you better book me with a fireman. Since I've been rolling with the sun, it's been your Louis Grand. And Mighty Lingo have a corner brother questioning. Like, how a brother with a past talking do again? I'm in the room again, all I see is golden rose. I'm on my brew again, you know I had to hit the road. Workaholic needs some help, I may have an issue. I pray my brother see the kingdom, man. We ain't taking no days out. This perpetual grind, all this hard work gon' pay off. I'm in a check of this, the free minds. We don't like to waste time, we don't ever show off. We rather move in silence. My people about to take off. But we gotta be united. We gon' move in silence, we ain't moving like the Pharisee. Far away is the only one that we should really care to please.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, Facebook Live, good morning, good morning, <clears throat> Breaking Strongholds Ministries, good morning, good morning, YouTube with Orlando keeping it simple. How's everybody doing this morning? How's everybody doing this morning? Um, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. I hope your day has been a great day. I hope you have really been truly blessed this week. I hope the Most High has, has really truly blessed you over and abundantly with love and kindness and peace and joy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope the Most High has really truly blessed your offsprings with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And protection. I hope he has protected you over and abundantly um, this morning. Um, I have had a hard week this week. I have had a hard week this week. Um, I just, I really had to understand why I had a hard week this week. Um, it's because of, like I tell, like I say to you all, and I remember going to, when I was going to the Christian churches, I remember God told me one day, he said, you have to learn the word through your experiences. He said, you have to learn the word through your experiences in order for you to be able to teach the word. And this week, I had to really go through some stuff that I, it's been kind of on my spirit. It was kind of rough for me, um, spiritually. Not physically, but spiritually. Um, I had a dream, I had a dream Wednesday night, and the dream was about this guy he came in a black suit. He was a black guy. He had on a black hat and black glasses with a black car. He came to approach me, and I pulled out my knife, thinking that I was going to cut him because I thought he was coming to a, to kill me, uh, take me away, or something to that nature. But I had to pull it up. I pulled it up. I googled some information about, you know, um, what is the meaning of that dream and so forth and so forth. And the symbolisms in the dream let me know that I had to deal with myself in some areas because I'm not able to reach my full potential if I don't deal with myself in some areas. Um, you know, I had to really deal with, I got to deal with myself in some areas so that I could be the best that I could be. But also help other people be the best that they could be. I was wondering why I was, I couldn't, I got, I purchased four new books this week. Um, last week I got one more coming. I got this one here. It's called Facts Are Facts. It's a really good book. Um, I've been reading that. And it's really talking about the, um, <clears throat> the history of the Jewish people. Then I got The Danger of a Single Story. Um, this is a really good book. When you um only getting a story from one side, it can be um it can be screwed, it can be misunderstood, it cannot be clearly interpreted correctly. So um I got that book and just and it's, it's dealing with the African migrants and the African Americans. 
and the relationship that the African migrants and the African Americans have, and the, and the, and the reason why the relationship is the way it is because it's only been told from one lens. It hasn't been told from both sides, so that you can sit down at the table and be able to understand each other. This book here I got to I got also it's called Germany Black Holocaust 1890 to 1945. And it's talking about how the Nazis treated the African or uh, the Hebrews or the black Americans or the black African Americans during the war with uh with the Nazis in World War Two and the propaganda they has. I got this one here also, um, called the Black Man's Bible, which I really like. Um, I was reading a little bit of it last night, and um, I like one of one of them in here. It says. I like this one that's on page 37. It reads, it says, Let no people take away that which you, the Lord thy God giveth thee. For the Lord shall inquire of it. And if, and if ye shall say, and if ye shall say someone has taken it, and ye shall in no wise escape punishment. For he that dieth in retreat of his enemies, the Lord shall not hold him guiltless. But a person, but a people who die in pursuit of their enemies, for the protection of that which the Lord God giveth them, shall receive a reward in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> what it's basically saying is, if you allow somebody to come in and destroy something. Um, within your household, and you do not fight for it, the Most High is going to—he's going to punish you for not defending your property, not defending what you what He has given you. Um, <clears throat> I like that book. I was reading a little bit of that last night, and also I got this one here: the Complete Fifty Four Books Apocryphus. I got that book. This week too, I got one more coming <clears throat> called The Destruction of Black Civilization. Um, I got those books. Um, I'm still reading this book here, uh, which is a great book, um, The Black Presence in the Bible. And there's so many books that I'm reading that I'm trying to make sure I, <clears throat> I, I, um, I, keep myself abreast of information so that I could be able to be equipped to be able to teach properly. Uh, but let us get started this morning. Uh, coming out of Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 17. Um, um, it reads, and God spake all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah thy El, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and thou shalt have no other Els before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for, for I, Yahuwah thy El, am a jealous El. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah thy El in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy El. In it thou shalt not do any works, thou nor thy sons, thy daughters, thy man servants, nor thy maid servants, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers, that is, within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy fathers and thy mothers that thy days belong upon the land which Yahuwah thy El giveth thee. 
Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbors, and thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not know his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. <clears throat> Man. Okay. I got, okay. Let me see something. I'm trying to see some real fair. But I'm gonna come back to it. I I'll come back to it. Um <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dine to your kingdom, power to your glory forever and ever. So let it be. Like I said, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? I hope everyone is well this morning. Um, I was looking at, uh, I was looking at this on um, Facebook, YouTube, right? And let me see if I can pull it up. This is what um, someone put on. One thing I want us to understand. All the information that we have today has been translated from translation to translation to translation to English translation. So during the time of the during the time of the translations, a lot of things can be misinterpreted. A lot of things can be misunderstood. A lot of things can be taken out of context, like the word faith in Hebrew does not mean the word belief. I mean it means the word belief. But the word faith in English means means uh the word faith in English means belief but or but faith in Hebrew is an action word faith in Hebrew is an action word but faith in English is a belief uh is a belief word so when you're looking at the words and you'd be looking at information throughout history it's like also the word gay <clears throat> long time ago used to mean happy. But now gay it has a totally different meaning. It does not mean the same. So sometimes they say a word can have a secondary meaning. Like the word gay. Gay means happy in the 60s, 50s and 60s. But now the word gay means something different. Just like the word... <clears throat> Faith in Hebrew means your actions, you but you're gonna do what you believe. But during during this time period, your faith is just what you believe. You don't have to put your faith into action. You can just believe it. Doesn't necessarily mean that you got to put what you believe into action. But um, <clears throat> I'm gonna read you something. This is what they this is what they said that the the um. This is what they said that the um, the Aramaic prayer used to read in 1892. The, the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic in 1892 used to read like this right here. It says, O cosmic birther of all radiant and vibrations, 
soften the ground of our being and carve out a space within us where your presence can abide. It says, fill us with your creativity so we may be empowered to bear the fruits of your mission. Let us each of our actions, let each of our actions bear fruit in accordance with our desires. It says, endow us with the wisdom to produce and share what each being needs to grow and flourish. It says, um, Untie the tangled thread of destiny that binds us as we release others from the entanglement of, of past mistakes. Do not let us be seduced by that which would divert. Let us let us be not let do not let us be seduced by that which would divert us from our true purpose. But eliminate us the opportunity of the present moment. It says, for you are the ground and the fruitful vision, the birth, the power, and fulfillment. As all is gathered and made whole once again. And it reads, and so it is. I like this part where it says, Endow earth with the wisdom to produce and share what each being needs to grow and flourish. Um, they said that was the Lord's Prayer in 1892 from the Aramaic perspective. That's what Jesus used to pray in the Aramaic. And some of them going to say, no, nah, it wasn't some. You know, you never know what the truth is because... Throughout history, everything has been misinterpreted, interpreted, and they've been adding to and taken away because, you know, it's been it's so much stuff that's been tampered with with the Bible. But I just wanted to bring that out to you today. But uh, if you could turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22 Uh, Matthew chapter 22 verses 36 through 40. Matthew chapter 26 is verses 36 through 40. And I'm going to just, um, the key verse is going to be verse, verse 39. And it said, and it reads, and Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord, thy, thou shalt love Yahuwah thy El with all thy heart, and with all our soul, and with all our minds. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two Commandments hang all the law and prophet and the prophets. Okay, and the in the in the key verse I'm gonna be coming from today is and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thyself, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm gonna go to Matthew chapter seven. So you can kind of understand it a little bit more. Chapter 7, verse 12. It says, have this in the back of your mind when you're reading, when, you, when I'm talking today. It says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And then, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, it says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophet. Let me read that again. It says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would, ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophet. Okay, so let us go to back to Matthew chapter 22. Chapter 22, verse 39. 
because I was just talking talking to you about how words change and evolutions, how words have a first and second meaning, right? So I'm gonna deal with the word as in this text in verse thirty in verse thirty nine. It says, "And the second is like unto it: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself." That word as in Hebrew means, that word as in Hebrew means like, like thyself, or just like thyself, or in the manner of thyself. Okay, but in Greek it means uh, love, love thy, thou shalt love thy neighbor. In the manner of thyself, or love, thou shalt love thy neighbor, even like or even as thyself, or so ever as thyself. So it has two different meanings. The word as in this text has two different meanings. The, the Hebrew text means you treat the people the way you want to be treated. But in the Greek, it says treat people the way you want to be treated. It's two different meanings. Want and, sh and should. So, in the Hebrew means you do it the way you... You, do, you treat people the way you want to be treated. But in the Greek, it's saying that you should treat people the way you want to be treated. It's not the same. The Greek is a wish. The Hebrew is an obligation. Okay? So, all of this was coming down because the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees was basically testing Yahshua. And they were just trying to question him on how things are. And they were asking him the questions. They was asking him a whole bunch of questions and they was trying to test his integrity or his knowledge. And that is, that's what they were asking about the first and second greatest commandments. How you should treat, what is the first greatest commandment? And it, he basically simplified it for you from through Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 the first commandment is going to the first five commandments. The second, the second greatest commandment is how you should treat your neighbor. But I'm going to deal with the word as. A-S. How you treat your neighbor like thyself. You should want to treat people the way you want to be treated. Or how you treat yourself. How you want to be treated, basically. Okay? So let me give you two words for today, and then I'm going to give you the title of the text. I know I'm sounding a little confusing, but I'm going to get to it in a few minutes. The word love. Love is a 13th century word. In a general sense, means, in a general sense, to be pleased with. Love means to be pleased with. To, re, to, be, uh, to regard with affection. On account of some qualities with excite, excite, pleasing sensations of, of, of desires of gratification. Have a passionate attachment. That's what the word love means from the physical sense. In a general sense to be pleased with. To regard with affections on account of some qualities which excites pleasing sensations or desires of gratification. Okay, then it says the word grace. I'm going to give you the word grace. The word grace is a 12th century word. Okay, the word grace is a 12th century word. Um, and it basically means... The word grace is a 12th century word. It means favor, goodwill, kindness, character, to help, state of reconciliations. It means pardon. It means mercy. Okay, that's what grace means. But let me read you out of the NAV, the NIV version of the word, the definition of love. Because I like 
the way the NIV say what love is. The word love coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 and 5. Okay. The word, the word love out of the Bible, it means love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, love does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It is not recorded of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. That's what the NIV version say. Okay? But, I'm dealing with the... Okay, and the title of the text today, my title of the text today is Treat Me the Way You Want to Be Treated. Treat me the way you want to be treated. The two key words today is love. Love is in, in, a, in a general sense to be pleased with, to regard with affection, on account of some qualities with excited, pleasing sensations of desire or gratification. Have a passionate attachment. Love is from the Bible. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. It is not proud, it does not, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. It, love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. The word grace, grace is favor, goodwill, kindness, character to help, state of reconciliation, grace is pardon and mercy. The word pardon means forgiveness. Okay, so now, as we're looking at this, what is the greatest commandments and how, they, how it works and how we should treat our brothers and sisters and how we should do things in life in order to be successful in this society. He say that is the second greatest commandment on how we should treat one another. But I'm, you, I'm, I'm dealing with the word as because I want to deal with, because it's, it's, the word as means is comparing to. Also, it means to compare to. How you treat yourself, you're going to compare you, how you treat yourself to how you treat somebody else. And then how you treat yourself, is it equal to how you treat somebody else? So if you're not treating, if you're treating yourself one way, are you actually treating that other person or your neighbor the same way? Or are you treating yourself the same? And, but in actuality, most people treat people the way they treat themselves. That is true to a certain extent because most people treat other people how they want to be treated, but they don't want those same people to treat them the way they're treating. Most people don't want people to treat them the way they're treating somebody else. Because what actually happens is revelation comes about. Revelation comes about because it shows you actually how you are as a person. That's why society <clears throat> is, that's why when Barack Obama became president, the, the, the country was so in a chaotic moment because everybody thought that, some people thought that they was going to get put in slavery because of them putting us through slavery. Or they thought the tide was going to be turned because of how they treated us. They was expecting for us to treat them the same way that we treated them. But most people treat other people how they treat themselves, but they don't want somebody else to treat them the way they treat them. It's an internal issue that people are going through when they when how they depending on based on how they treat themselves and how they treat other people. It's an internal issue. 
That's why I said I like that. I like this since um <clears throat> I like this in 1 Corinthians, and I want us to be able to understand something. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 and 5. <clears throat> and I'm going to come back to it in a minute. And I'm just going to give you four points, and I'm going to be done. Three points, and I'm going to be done. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. It always protects, always trust, always hope, always persevere. So now I'm dealing with the word and, and I'm basically going to deal with people within themselves. I'm dealing with us as a humanity today because I think that the title of the text say, Treat me the way you want to be treated. But we got to treat, uh, we got to base first how we can be able to treat other people good. We got to first treat ourselves good. We first got to treat ourselves good to be able to understand how to treat other people good. Because if we don't know how to treat ourselves, we can't treat other people. We can't take, we can't take care of other people. We can't love other people the way we want to be loved because we first got to love ourselves. And because we got to understand that we in this society, we are some damaged people. We have been going through a lot. We have been doing, we have had a lot of negative experiences in life. We have seen some horrific things on television. We have seen some horrific things in our communities in our families we have been taught that love is one thing but in actuality it could be something totally different and <clears throat> I'm just dealing with us it says as thyself but I'm going to deal with thyself today I want to deal with us as an individual because we first got to know how to love us so that we can know how to love other people and if we don't know how to love us we definitely can't love nobody else. And I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, right? And he said, man, <clears throat> I know that I can do certain things, but I know that I can't do certain things because if I put myself in a situation where I know I'm vulnerable, I know that I'm going to make a mistake. I know that I'm going to do something I know I shouldn't do. Whether If I go to the gun store and... I like these guns. And he said, I could have just bought a gun that cost me $3,000. He said, but if I go back into the gun store again, I could turn around and buy me two more guns. Even though I know I don't need the guns, but I know I can do it. He said, so I ain't going to even put myself in that situation of knowing that I'm vulnerable when I go into a gun store. So I'm going to stay out the gun stuff because I know myself. And see, us being, a, us being in the Americas, being Hebrew Israelites or African American people, we got to really do some examinations of ourselves in order to be able to love ourselves. If we don't really truly do no examination of ourselves, we really can't do no, we can't really love ourselves the way we're supposed to. We really got to do some self-evaluation, some self-examination. And the word examine means to inspect someone or something in details to determine their nature or conditions. It means to investigate thoroughly. In order for you to be, to be able to love yourself, you actually got to know yourself. And if you actually don't know yourself, or you haven't examined yourself, you really don't know what you love and what you don't really truly love. You don't really know who you are as a person. You think you may know yourself as a person, but in actuality, you may not know. Because you really haven't truly did no investigation or no true examination of yourself. 
Okay, so let us go to 2 Samuel. <clears throat> 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 5 and 6. And this is when Nathan was rebuking David for sending Uriah to the front line so that he can have Bathsheba as his wife. And I'm going to read 1 through, 1 through 6 so that you can get a clearer understanding. And it says, And Yahuwah sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little lamb, which he had brought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him. And with his children, it did eat his own meat and drank of his own cup and laid in his bosoms and was unto his and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wearfaring man that come that was come unto him but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him listen to this listen to this and david anger was kindled against the man and he said to nathan as the lord liveth the man that has done this thing shall surely die And shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Listen. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus said the Lord El of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel and delivered thee out of the hands of Saul. So what happened is Nathan had to come to David. And show David who he really was as a person. Who he really was as a king. See, David was an arrogant and proudful man. Even though he loved the Most High, he was a very proudful man. Wanted to be tested. He wanted to show the Most High how much he really truly loved him. But David was... But David overstepped his boundaries on how he used, how he dealt with Uriah. But once David was shown, and once ex David examined the whole story of what he did to Uriah, he had to take a look at himself because he understood what he did to Uriah was wrong. If we first don't examine ourselves as a person and as a people, we're going to continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. And wonder why we continue to be in the same conditions and the same mistakes all over again. See, David, Nathan had to show David who he was. That's why he gave them him David the example because David David was able to associate himself with that example and then when Nathan said that was you who did that to Uriah you kill Uriah just to be able to have that man's wife see what David thought he what David thought he was doing wasn't actually what he was doing David was David had to examine himself to see how he was. And you're right, and Nathan had to show him. Let us go to John chapter, let's, let us go to uh, St. John chapter um, 8, verse 1. St. John chapter 8, verse 1. Because a lot of us think that we're perfect. 
we're good where we are. When we have been in this society for over 35 to 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 years, a lot of us think that we're good. We don't need this and we don't need that. But we all need to examine ourselves sometimes to see where we are and how do we get here. Because if we don't examine ourselves, we're going to continue to fall in the same mess over and over and over again. John chapter 8 verses 7 through 9, it says, So when they continue asking, asking him, he lift up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. Then I'm going to go back to that verse in a second. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, being beginning at the elders even unto the last. And Yahshua was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Listen to what verses 8, 7 said in the red. What G, listen to what Jesus, uh, Yahshua said in the red. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And then listen to verse 9. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one. Meaning that they understood that they was jacked up. So when they understood that they was jacked up, they first had to say, that's why that's why Yahshua the Hamashiach did what he did, because he's like, no, you can't do this. You first got to under you got to have compassion. That's why they didn't cast a stone, because they knew that they make mistakes. And when you know you make mistakes. You got to render that to your brothers and sisters. First, but you got to realize that you're not perfect. You got to realize that you're going to do some things, you're going to say some things, and you're going to be some, be some kind of way sometime. You got to realize that. And when you realize that, you got to realize that other people are going to be the same way. But a lot of people don't want to render what they want. A lot of people don't want to give what they want. But they want to give what, they want to receive what they want, but they don't want to give what they want. And that's the hardest part about life. But if we don't do a strong examination of ourselves, we're going to continue to fall in the hole. We're going to continue to repeat the cycle. So if we don't understand that the reason why they couldn't cast the first stone because they knew that they made some mistakes. They had to do some examination. They first had to say, hold on now, I don't did some things I shouldn't have done. Hold on now, I know I shouldn't, I don't say some stuff I shouldn't have said. Hold on now, I don't thought some ways I shouldn't have thought. Hold on now, I don't did all this stuff. I can't do that to her because I know that I'm the same way. That's, that is so vital to us being successful in this life, in this in this journey that we own, is understanding that, hey, we are some jacked up people. But if you don't do no examination of yourself, you'll never realize that. And see, I'm not going to be ashamed to tell you, and I'm going to tell you, I've been in therapy for over 10 years. And I love it. I love it because it keeps me responsible for me. And one of the first things that I had to learn doing my therapy is grace. I had to learn grace, which is favor, goodwill, kindness, character to help, self-state of reconciliation, forgiveness, and mercy. I had to do all that stuff to me first before I can give it to anybody else. I had to be favored for myself. I had to go goodwill to myself. It means treat myself good. I had to treat myself good. I had to be kind to myself. Because I had to understand that 
my conditions wasn't perfect. I had to understand that I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. I had to understand that I don't see some horrific stuff. I had to understand that my, I, don't, I don't hurt and been through a lot of stuff. So if I understand that, that I've been through that, that means that I needed to help myself first. I don't need to be so hard on myself because it, does, it just compounds the problem. But if you're not willing to give yourself no grace because of whatever you've been through in life and because of your experiences, the way you treat yourself is how you're going to treat other people. And the way you're going to be treating yourself is going to be harsh. It's going to be hard. It's going to be judgmental. It's going to be a lot of negativity because you haven't learned to forgive yourself because of what you've been through in life. Because you're thinking that you are the only ones that been through whatever it is, or you thinking that all was means I'm a victim. No, you're just going through stuff. The Most High is taking you through that so that you can learn to have grace on other people. For you to learn to have compassion for other people. And if you don't have that, it's because you haven't did no examination or, or no examination of yourself. Let us go to Matthew chapter 26. Let us go to verse 75, 74 and 75. See, a lot of us think that we're perfect and we're far from being perfect. A lot of us think that we got it going on. We don't have it going on. I'm just as jacked up as I, I'm just as jacked up as anybody else. But the Most High just gave me this gift to be a teacher. But that don't mean that I don't have problems. That don't mean that I ain't got no issues. That don't mean that I, don't, I ain't struggling. That means that He just gave me a gift in the midst of me going through all these other issues. Okay, in Matthew chapter 26, 74 and 75, it says, Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crow. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, or Yahshua, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Peter wept bitterly because he understood that he wasn't where he needed to be at the time. His faith, his reality, his whole process of going through life. The reason why Peter wept is because he realized that he was jacked up. Because he said, oh, I wouldn't die. I would not deny you. Oh, I would not deny you. Peter said, oh, I would not deny you, Lord. I would not deny you. In the moment it came to test Peter to see if he was going to deny Yahshua, he failed to tell. Peter wept because he understood that he failed the test. Peter wept because he understood that he was flawed. Peter understood. Peter wept because he knew that he had some internal issues that he had to deal with. Of being proud and boastful and arrogant and all this other stuff. Walking around saying what he know he won't do. When nobody knows what they will and won't do. You just better hope you won't do it. And don't put yourself in that condition to don't to do what you hoping not to do. But Peter wept because he failed to tell. David, David was upset because he realized that he was jacked up. Those people who had those stones in their hand, they realized they examined themselves enough to say, well, man, I can't throw no stones at her because I know I got some stones at me. I know I got some issues within me. When you really do some self-evaluations, you really wouldn't do a lot of stuff to somebody else. 
because you know that you got to really work on yourself. You really would really just calm down and say, man, we all got to go. We all got issues. We all got problems. We'll be, you'll be all right. We all got this going on. We all got that going on. When you can examine yourself, you could be able to, that's when the change really started to happen. And you be truthful with yourself. Okay? Let us go to the second point. The second point is faults. When you can examine yourself, you can recognize your faults. But the hardest part about life is examining yourself. Putting that mirror up to you and saying, who am I really? Who am I really? What am I all about? What I like and what I really don't like. What I want and what I really don't want. When you put that mirror up to your face, that's when you can really start the process. That's when you can really start giving grace. The second point though is, is, is faults. Faults is an unpleasant or disappointing feature or behavior. Faults are is an unpleasant or disappointing behavior, especially in a piece of work or in a personal character. Criticize for, for shortfalls or mistakes. Faults are unpleasant or disappointing behavior. Especially in a piece of work or in a personal character. Criticize for shortfalls or mistakes. Okay? Let us go to um, 1 Samuel. Chapter 15. Verses 24 and 25. And I'm going to say this to you. <clears throat> Sometimes people will make, people will divorce somebody because they see somebody else's flaws but don't see their own flaws. They don't see that they have come cause more harm and hurt to the marriage than the person who they divorce. And the reason why that happens is because they don't do no self-evaluation or examination of themselves. So they'll never recognize their faults. Okay, first Samuel chapter 15 verses 24 and 25. And it reads, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Let me go back. Okay. Okay, in verse 24 it says, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have, for I have transgressed the commandments of Yahuwah. And thy words, because I fear the people, and abut and obey their voice. Now, therefore, I pray thee, forgive or pardon my sins, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord or Yahuwah. Okay. Um. So, when Samuel was talking to Saul, and the reason why Saul got kicked out, out of being the leadership of the children of Israel is because Saul made a lot of mistakes. And he knew that he made his mistakes. And Saul made mistakes because the simple fact is he was trying to please other people. Okay? Let me go back to that one. 1 Samuel 15 and 25. I want you to hear this. 
The reason why some people make mistakes in life is because of them wanting to please other people. It's, it's in 24. And, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandments of Yahuwah and thy words. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. We sometimes, if we don't do no true strong evaluation, examination of ourselves and we look at the mistakes that we made, we can't really get down to the source of the problem. And sometimes the source of the problem is not us, but it is us, but we doing it to please other people and not trying to do what's right by us. That's why Saul got kicked out of the kingdom because he was stuttered trying to please other people in the decision that he was making. And he told you he recognized his mistakes and why he made the mistake that he made. He said, I made a mistake because, he said, I have sinned because I was trying to please other people and doing what they want me to do. And see, that's a lot of time our problem. Our problem is that we try to please other people when we are here in this world instead of just doing what's right. Doing what the Most High is telling us to do. A lot of times we'll try to go out here and please everybody else instead of just doing what we're supposed to do. And that's why we continue to be in the same boat. Let us go to Psalms 32. Three through five. And see... <clears throat> We all have, it's like the most I was talking to me, he, he gave me this thing last week. He said, we all trying to satisfy the devil inside of us. We all trying to, we all trying to satisfy that devil or that appetite inside of us. Whatever that appetite is or whatever that devil is making you feel, wherever you feel, we're trying to satisfy it. For whatever reason it is. Doesn't mean that the appetite is right. Doesn't mean that the appetite is wrong. But we're trying to sell we're trying to satisfy that appetite, which sometimes goes against what the reality is. Psalms 32, 3 through 5, and it says, When I kept silent, my bones waxed old through my my roaring all day long. For day and night thy hands was heavy upon me. My, my moisture is turned into drought of summer. Listen to this. I acknowledge my sins unto thee. My iniquities have I not hid. I say I will confess my transgressions unto Yahuwah. And thou forgiveth the iniquities of my sins. When we start to acknowledge, when, when we start to examine ourselves, we can really start to acknowledge some stuff that we know about us. We can start acknowledging our sins. Yes, because I'm hot-headed sometimes. I'm very high. I'm quick-tempered. I'm one of the nicest persons that you can ever meet. And I can I will give you almost anything that I have. But the minute you you do something to me, I can be triggered and go from a one to a ten in a hot minute. That's what I know about myself. And I'm very dismissive. I'm I can I, I am I am something. I can be something sometimes. That's something I know about myself. And I have to deal with that on a regular basis because I, 
I do a lot of inner monologue and I do a lot of talking to myself because I know how I am as a person. I don't like that person, so I, kind of, I try to suffocate that person a lot because I don't want that person to come out. But I know me. I know that I want to, I don't want to put myself in a situation because I know me. Because I did, I'm doing, I'm on my 10th year of therapy. But if you don't know you because you did no evaluation, examination of you, you don't know what you do. You don't know how you are. You don't want to, you don't want to say no thing. You can't say what you like or what you don't like. But if you ain't did no examination, you can't, you can't, you can't even confess your sins. You can't even acknowledge your wrongdoings if you can't even, if you don't even, if you can't even, you can't even examine yourself and say, "No, nah, I know I got some. I know I do some lies sometimes. I know I don't tell the truth sometimes. I'm sneaky." Let us go to First John. So I'm just dealing with us today. I'm just dealing with the individual, not nobody else. I'm dealing with the individual. Because we got to understand, for the last two years, we've been through some horrific experiences. We haven't seen a lot of stuff. We haven't heard a lot of stuff. It don't mess with us traumatically in the mind. So we got to deal with that. 1 John 1, 8 through 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we, con if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him, the Most High, a liar and his word is not in us. If we think we're perfect and we don't do nothing wrong, we're making the word wrong and we're making him wrong. We're making him turn out to be a liar. So we got to understand that we ain't perfect. We make mistakes. Everybody jacked up. But you first, I'm going to get back to it in a few minutes. You know, um, we got to we got to understand that <clears throat> if we were thinking we walk around thinking we perfect, we we lying to ourselves, we lying to the Most High. Only person you tricking is yourself. Only person you lying to is yourself. And my third point: <clears throat> compassion. Compassion. Compassion is the feeling that arises when you are confronted with another suffering and feel motivated to relieve that suffering. Compassion means the feeling that arises when you are confronted with another suffering and feel motivated to relieve that suffering. Let us go to Leviticus chapter 19. <clears throat> and I want us to understand this verse. It says, if a stranger so journey with thee in your land, talking about the children of Israel and when they should come, when we're going to get some strangers attached, um, attached to us when we go to the promised land. When we go to the promised land, we're going to have some, some strangers or uh, some Gentiles with us, right? 
It says, and, and if and and if a stranger shall journey with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him, I mean punish him. But the stranger that dwells with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself, mean like thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am Yahuwah thy El. The reason why the Most High said you should love him like thyself. Because he's telling you, you should, uh, you should have understanding and compassion. And you know how it feels. You know how it feels to be a stranger in the land. You know how it feels to be mistreated. You know how it feels to go through pain and suffering. You know how it feels to be um, prejudiced. You know how it feels for somebody to hate you because of your skin color. You know how it feels for somebody to dislike you because of your hair texture. You know how it feels because of all those things there. Because you went through it too. Because when you go through something, you really understand how it feels. That's when you can give compassion to somebody else. But you also got to be able to give that same compassion to you. Understanding that when you examine yourself and you find your faults, you will realize that a lot of the things that happened to you wasn't really your fault. It was somebody else's. It was somebody else's. Taking their hurt out on you. Because they say. Hurt people. Hurt people. So when you understand that hurt people. Hurt people. And you understand that you are a hurt person. Because of your examination. And because you recognize that you got a fault. You have compassion on you. And you have compassion on yourself. On other people. Because if you don't have no compassion on you, who else will? If you don't give yourself no grace, who else will? Self-care self -care starts with you first. It's just like when you're getting on an airplane, right? And they can start going through the things of how if the airplane loses his height or it falls a certain amount of feet and then the, the, um, the air mask come out. They don't tell you to put somebody else's mask on first. They tell you to put your mask on first. Why? You first got to put yours on so you can be able to retrieve the air so that you can be able to help other people. Because if you don't take care of yourself first, you can't take care of nobody else. You first got to examine yourself and recognize your issues within yourself and give yourself compassion so that you can move forward out of those issues. Because if you don't, you will continue to make the same mistake. You're going to continue to be hard on yourself. You're going to be continue to be judgmental of people. You're going to continue to just... Put so much pressure on yourself that it's unfulfilling to you and everybody around you. Let us go to Matthew chapter 7. Listen to this. Listen. It says, judge not that ye be, it says, judge, chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. It says, judge not that ye be not judged. He said, that's the reason why they didn't throw them rocks at that lady. Because they, <laughs> they didn't want no rocks thrown at them. They said, when you point a finger at somebody else, you got three pointing right back at you. It says, judge not that ye not that ye be not judged. That means keep your mouth closed because you know you make some mistakes too. Then it says, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. 
and with what measure ye met meet, it shall be me measured to you again. <clears throat> See, when you are hard on yourself, you're gonna be hard on other people, and then people are gonna turn around and be hard on you. That's just gonna make your whole life more complicated. Because I do it all the time. And I do it as an experiment. I do things as an experiment. When I'm at work sometimes. And I don't messed up. You know what I tell my boss? Man, I don't jacked up, man. I don't made some mistakes, man. I don't did this, man. I don't did that, man. Man, I don't did this, and man, I don't did that. You know what the first thing they say to me? Man, it's okay. Everybody human. It's all right. Let's not try to make the same mistake over and over again. But you're okay. Let's let's correct it. It can be fixed. Let's move on. That's what I do, and that's what they give me in return. When they, I I be judgment on myself, but the people be great. They give me grace. I tell you, I when I acknowledge my faults to other people, they give me grace. Because I acknowledge that I made mistakes. I acknowledge that I don't jack some stuff up. I do it all the time at work. I do it to my, my offspring. I don't know if I do it to my wife or not, though. But I do it to my offspring. I tell my wife I messed up. She may not like sometimes what I do or how I say things. But I tell her, yeah, I messed up. I apologize. But if you can't give yourself compassion, you can't do nothing for nobody else. Because you're going to look at people the way you look at yourself. That's why you just got to be like, man, forgive me. I don't did some stuff wrong. I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't cheat it. I don't did all these things. Forgive me, Father. And when you hear somebody else say they don't lie, they don't steal, they don't cheat it, he's like, man, join the, join, 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 the, join the group. Join the crowd. We all ain't, we ain't perfect, man. When we can become like that as a society, not saying that it's right, but understanding that we are flawed, we, we make mistakes, we could be so much better. Okay, last one. Mark chapter 6. Verses 34. It reads... And Yahshua, when he came out, saw many people and was moved with compassion towards them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. What begins you to be, get, what, what makes you feel, what moves you to compassion to people is what you see. You can see it from a personal experience. You can see it from a physical experience. You can see it from a spiritual experience. But what caused you to move with compassion is because when you know yourself. Because you don't examine yourself. And you recognize that, yeah, I drink too much. Yeah, I cuss too much. Yeah, I eat too much. Yeah, I got a bad craving for sugar. Sugar is the worst drug that you can ever be addicted to. When you recognize those things about yourself, you could be more, you could be a better person to people. You could be able to, you could be able to treat me the way you want to be treated. And you'll treat me with compassion because you recognize your faults. And because you recognize your faults, you, how you recognize your faults is through your, examine, your examination of yourself. 
You start loving yourself better. You start giving yourself more grace. And when you give yourself more, when you start loving yourself and you start giving yourself more grace, that'll go to the whole society. I tell people all the time, man, you me and I'm you. I say, I can't be hard on you. I ain't going to be no judgment on you. I say, you are, you are a black man in America. You're going to get treated harshly. You're going to get pulled over. You might get cussed out by the police. You're going to get a high interest rate. I say, you're going to get all these things. So it does me no good to put my finger on your neck when everybody else got their finger on your neck. Because I'm going through the same thing that you're going through. And women, African American women are women, period. You can't be hard on yourselves. You can't be hard on other people because you've been through some stuff. You've been jacked up. Your dad ain't been around. Your mama ain't been around. You probably don't suck. You got cheated on. You don't cheat it. You don't been lied to and you don't did some lying. Everything in the book, you probably don't did it. Ain't nobody exempt from it. So just treat people the way you want to be treated. If you don't want to be lied to, don't lie. If you don't want to be cheated on, don't cheat. If you want to be trusted, be able to trust. Let me say something to you. These are four, these are some things that I want you to be give yourself. Number one. Be patient with yourself. Understand that, hey, you ain't where you want to be. You ain't doing what you want to do. You ain't where you want to be physically and spiritually. Nothing is done overnight. Be patient with yourself. Second, be kind to yourself. Don't be so hard. Don't be so 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 hard on yourself thinking that you're supposed to be perfect. Be kind, be nice to yourself. Treat yourself well. Take care of your temple. Do not be angry with yourself because of the mistakes that you have made. Don't feel like you're a bad person because you made a lot of bad decisions. Don't be angry with you where you are. You are where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. So embrace that moment. Because sometimes we can be so hard on ourselves because our expect expectations are where we think we should be when in actuality we, we are where we are supposed, we're supposed to be. Okay? Let me say this to you. Trust yourself. Trust you as a person. Trust yourself. Understand your capacities. Understanding where you can go and where you can't go. What you should do and what you shouldn't do. You got to trust yourself enough to be able to know your abilities. And the last one is. Persevere. Always push through. Never give up. And never give in. Never throw in the towel. Never say it's done. I'm over with it. Always persevere. This is how you be able to treat other people 
the way you want to be treated is because you're going to be patient with yourself because you know you make mistakes. You're going to be kind to yourself because you know how it is. You're, going to not, you're not going to be angry and disappointed because of where you are. Because you feel like you don't make mistakes. So everybody's you're been gonna, asking you, me how I you, got this car. You're going to, you're going to trust yourself. On it, and they you're really going to trust yourself. You're going to trust yourself with the decisions you make and you're going to persevere through all of these things. Give yourself some love and some grace. But how you can treat people to treat me the way you want to be treated? You got to examine yourself. You got to recognize your faults. You got to give yourself some compassion through all of that. Amen. So thank you for listening today. Thank you for everything. Um, you know, I just got to continue to work on myself as you work on yourself. Because this is not an easy journey. This is not an easy life. We all have had experiences. We all have been through some stuff. We all have done some things. And that's something we just got to deal with. And we got to roll with it. And not beat ourselves up over the head about it. Because we'll never be able to get where we truly want to be. We'll, at some point in time, we'll just hopefully be doing our purpose. So let me pray so we can go. Abba, as we come to you today, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we give you all the honor and the glory. Abba, we thank you for everything that you have done and what you continue to do. Abba, we just love you and we praise you. We give you all the honor and the glory. Abba, we thank you for giving us sight to see, ears to hear, and a mouth to speak. Abba. But let us be able to help ourselves so we can help one another. Let us be able to give compassion to ourselves so we can give compassion to someone else. Let us be patient with ourselves so we can be patient with other people. Let us be kind to ourselves so that we can be kind to other people. Let us trust ourselves so we can learn to trust other people. Let us persevere through this life so we can help other people persevere through what they have going on. Because we understand that, Abba, this is not a sprint. This is a journey. This is something that's going to continue on until you call us home. Let us also not be angry with ourselves because of where we are in life. We can't make it. Let us understand that we can't go back and change time. And we can't go back and do this. and We can't go back and do that. We are where we are. We just got to deal with it. We just got to roll with it. The mistakes we all made, let it be a learning lesson. Let us be able to understand that people behind us are going to make mistakes. And we got to be able to teach them what the mistakes that we made. And be honest about our situations in life. That's what it is. We just got to be honest about us. Who we are. David recognized that he made mistakes. Paul, on the road of Damascus, made a lot of mistakes. But he, he understood that on the road to Damascus, he knew that he made a lot of jacked up decisions, which affected a lot of people. So that's why he was one of, that's why he was one of the people that had the most books and most canons in the New Testament because his message to the people was compassion and understanding because of what he did in his previous life before the true encounter. We understand that our true encounter comes when we start to examine our faults and have compassion for us because of what we did. You have forgiven us. And if since you have forgiven us, let us forgive ourselves so that we can move forward. Let us forgive ourselves and so that we can be able to have grace and be able to understand our mission and purpose in life. Let us be able to forgive ourselves that let us see that we're not perfect. We're human. We're finite creatures. We're going to make mistakes. 
let us be able to forgive ourselves that, hey, this is what it is sometimes. I was born, I was born in a sinful world and I made some sinful decisions because of the atmosphere and the environment that I was in. But let me also understand that I can ask for forgiveness and move forward in this life and be who you have called me to be. And all these things I pray in your higher name. So let it be. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Happy Sabbath day. You know what I'm saying? We all come from the Most High. So how you gonna say you hate them? The little Most High. Listen have to love your neighbor as yourself. Israel. Talk to 